Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Were you ready? Yeah, internet's not working, so I'll just read it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, this is called fine wine. Fine what? Fine wine. Okay. She should be observed and pondered over. After some time, she can be bought and analyzed for a heavy slumber bottle. Stan Green. She was created by the earth itself. They disturb romance, happiness, and taste buds in others. Taken from the shelves of the vineyard stores of the cupboard of his house, she will be sat down at the dinner table with him. He will drink in the fine wine and slowly savor her exquisite taste, alone at the dinner table some years later. He will remember the fine wine and her exquisite taste, and how he too was created by the earth itself. The instinctual drive that pulled him to, to the slender bottle. There is no way to temper the thirst for the wine she holds inside the bottle. He drank her quickly at, at that dinner table soon after his thirst deepened. When she lost all of the wine to the thirst of him, she became empty. But his hands remembered her as they washed the wine stains from his clothes. Now the empty bottle sits atop the cover, empty. A weightless void is all that remains inside of her. From time to time, he spots the bottle atop the cover and remembers her exquisite taste, just as a fine wine should be remembered as. That was actually on uh, I wrote this because I was thinking about a past relationship. So, that's what I thought. And, it was and, the, and that's the point of poetry. You know, the empathy, you, you have the ability to take it. And the wine became the girlfriend. It's the things that you can't say, and poetry allows you to say it in a form where you're getting it out of Wonderful. I, I love how you said that she became him. That's just that image, that picture in my head. I think my kids want to say that it was personified in the relationship. What, uh, what gave you that idea? Um, so, I think we're red. Mm -hmm. um, we're relationship, I think. So, it was a good way to do it. Did everybody use a real life experience? Nobody did a fictional character or tried to be someone else. No. <laughs> okay. Why do you think that is? Because you hear talk about things that you put up with or I guess experience than it is to make something up, I guess. Like, ladies and 
gentlemen and keep your hands and arms in the airplane at all times. I'm like, this is my toy. Like, leave me alone. And then when I didn't want him to play with me it was the times he wanted to play. So sometimes I can really get mad at him, like last night, and because I don't live at home anymore, and so I don't see him that much. My mom is very close with her brother, so I felt like our relationship is growing apart, and we're like best friends, like my brother and I. And he tells me everything, and I tell him everything. And like he says something, I forget what it was, but it like made me so angry. And it's like, how could you even say that? And, he, like, and so then he ended up apologizing. He felt that way, but. How old is he now? He's 14, I'll be 15. Well, he's getting to that age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I call that little brother, but he's really my big brother. He's like 6'2", 220 pounds. He's a big dude. Wow. Did anybody else? Are you sure, Brooke? Are you not him? I like your mom, so I'm not. But why don't oh, you, you tell wanna, me you want to read it out loud then? Yeah, you did. Just Which for time. Time. You told me you wanted to read it. Yours is very good. Shut up, Jake. Shut up, Jake. Shut up, Jake. Shut up, Jake. Shut up, Confident strides carried him up the mountain path, stopping in a clearing to admire the expanse before us. He admires nature. I take a moment to admire this man who has shaped me. He is many things, small without being short, smart without being clever, quiet without being green. He is the example I have followed throughout my life, the predecessor, the bridge builder, the forebear, the shining light to follow in a dark room. I look to him to be the example of right and wrong, of genius and stupidity, of fatherhood. Looking at him now, I know why, because he did the same. I know. Who's was he? Who's was he? Who's was he? Who's was he? When my students are writing poetry, so this is a thing they cannot do. Uh, poems must be titled. And if it's not titled, you must put on it, untitled, to let the poetry know I'm coming back to you, unless the name is untitled. Because it's a baby. It's like birthing something. It's like giving life to something. And everything that it is that exists has a name. Yes, chair, door, computer, monitor. So our poetry deserves that same. And I wouldn't say name it fatherhood because that would be just you know automatic. But look into the piece and find out a title for it. And sometimes the title is almost like the first line, if you will, kind of just uh, flows right into the piece. Love it. Yeah, we're out of time. Does anybody have any last questions? Last questions, comments? Did you have anything uh, that you wanted to Well, thank you so much for having me. It is my um, pleasure to always do this. I, I, I think I said no yet, right? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I hope you're all now really excited for Tuesday when we're going to read some more poems and look also at poetry as music. I do want you to bring uh, the lyrics of a song that you think you know that means something to you or that you feel is fulfilling this definition of poetry. Uh, and be prepared to share that with the class and talk briefly. Um,